How's it going guys? Welcome to molecules and their structures. Now I know it may seem like we're focusing a lot on atomic structures and behaviors, but I assure you that it's important to understand these things before we move too deep into biology. Based on the last few videos, when we talked about the valence number, the number of unpaired electrons on the outer shell, we're really talking about the number of bonds that a single atom can create. If an atomic number has one unpaired valence electron, it can potentially form one covalent bond with another atom with an unpaired valence electron. So it shouldn't be too surprising to know that nitrogen, for example, has a valence number of three and can form three covalent bonds, while a hydrogen atom with a valence number of one can only form one covalent bond. Let's take a look at carbon, an atom that naturally carries with itself a valence number of four, and you guessed it, having potentially four covalent bonds. Let's make it simple and say that each of these unpaired valence electrons will bond to four hydrogens each with their own unpaired valence electrons. The result is CH4, or what's commonly known as methane. Here's a question for you. What's the result of a nitrogen and hydrogen bond? Since nitrogen has a valence number of three, that would mean that it has three available spots. We would need three individual hydrogen atoms to fill each of those spaces. The result is NH3, or otherwise known as ammonia. Here's one you might be familiar with. What's the result of oxygen and hydrogen? Well, since oxygen carries a valence number of two, that would mean we could connect an electron from hydrogen here and here, forming H2O. Just FYI, if you don't understand where valence numbers come from, I left a video below in the comments that really explains how we come up with this number. Check it out. Keep in mind that sometimes molecules can form two or three covalent bonds to each other. And this is okay as long as both atoms are mutually satisfied on how their outer shells fill up. Okay, let's talk about shapes. Atoms and their structures and, and electrons locations are imagined into these tangible shapes that you should be aware of. The position of these covalent bonds are influenced by the repulsive nature of other electrons, both shared and unshared, orbiting the atom. Let's start with a simple shape, a line. What atoms that bond to forming a molecule look like a line? Nitrogen. N2, for one, is obviously a line. When you have a molecule like N2 that is formed from two atoms of nitrogen, the only logical shape they can possibly form is a line. It doesn't really matter if there's more than one bond in the case of two atoms, it's always going to be linear. But what if we had more than two atoms in a molecule? What if we had three? Well, one possibility is it still being a line if those atoms were all spaced straight out. Another could be a triangular-like or bent shape. Let's look at each one at a time. CO2 is a three-atom molecule that is shaped like a line. How? Well, just look at the structure and the covalent bonds. These two double bonds repel each other because they're both negatively charged with the carbon in between. There are no other unpaired single electrons or paired electrons on the outer shell, so nothing to cause any repelling forces other than the double bonds on the oxygen and the double bonds on the other oxygen. Here, the two bonds push each other as far apart as possible, causing a straight line. H2O is different. Both hydrogens each share a single bond to oxygen, but in this case, oxygen has two pairs of valence electrons and two single unpaired electrons. If both hydrogens occupy each of the two unpaired electrons, that would leave two electron pairs floating around the atomic shell. The two pairs of the electrons are free to do as they please, unbound to any sharing between the other atoms. These electrons cause some serious repelling forces against the two hydrogen bonds. And instead of allowing hydrogen to comfortably spread out 
on each end of the oxygen, the spare electrons cause tension, slightly pushing the hydrogens down at an angle, forming this bent shape. Here's one last example of a sometimes confusing structure that might catch you off guard, methane, which is CH4. Can you guess what structure it looks like? If you guess something along the lines of a plus sign, that's not entirely correct. You see, a plus sign is based on a two-dimensional space. Protrusions of the bond can occur anywhere around the atom, and so realistically, methane often comes in the form of a tetrahedral, where every bond is about 110 degrees spaced out from all other bonds. Anyways, that's gonna be it for the basics. It's been a long while, but in the next few videos, we're going to talk about water and a little bit about that history. Keep in mind, it's best to have a good background knowledge on chemistry to continue through this channel. Don't worry, I've laid it all out for you in my previous videos. Everything you need to know. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, comment below. And again, like, subscribe, and share. Stay safe. Peace.